Hello, this is Ian Scales from Telecom TV, and I'm here today with John Geary. John is the Senior Vice President for Product and Marketing for OpenWave. John, welcome. We want to talk a bit about context, and I know this is a big marker for, uh, for OpenWave, so I'll let you do the talking. What's context mean, and why is it important? Context, when we speak of context at OpenWave, we're talking about providing the contextually aware experience uh, it's most commonly thought of as, for example, location aware, which is uh, now a very popular context. But there are many other contexts. There's context of where you are, what type of device you're on, what type of data plan you have, what type of social networking preferences you have, behavior preferences, usage patterns. So when we talk about context, we talk about the entire 360 degree view of someone's mobile data experience. Okay, so that's context, and obviously we're talking about the, the mobile area here because they move about and you need to put them in context, don't you? So describe a little bit about your business model. What, what are you actually doing in terms of context? To, who do you provide services to? So there's two ends of the context model, I'll call it. The first is we provide services to operators to help them more cost-effectively manage their network. So we provide services like web optimization or video optimization, algorithms which recognize content and provide different types of compression and quality capabilities without causing a, a negative impact on the user experience. So the, the fundamental net net of that is an operator can use their network resources more cost effectively. It's a very important challenge in today's world where mobile data is just beginning to come into the market However, different from our previous experience where mobile operators had voice revenue, this data revenue is much more flat or fixed and le has less elasticity and therefore being more cost effective is critical. That's the first part. The second part of context that we provide is through our analytics platform. It's our ability to provide insights on user behavior, um, device um, usage, times of sessions, length of sessions, URLs um, visited, downloads made. That analytical capability provides us the opportunity to help operators get a much deeper understanding of their users and how their users use their, um, camp if you will, marketing campaigns and devices. So we've got a bit of an idea about what context is. Give us a bit more detail about what sort of things you can measure to establish the context of a user at any given time. So a, a good use case, for example, is I, I recently um, uh, decided to buy an iPad. Um, so the operator is a distributor. They provide an iPad. Um, what's difficult, at least to date, has been for operators to understand the marketing campaign in real time. And in the mobile world, that's even more important because, for example, uh, I buy an iPad, as do apparently millions of others in a very short period of time, um, what do we do with that iPad? Um, how do we use it? How often we use it? How frequently we browse with it? How frequently we download videos with it, for example? Uh, the length of our sessions, the amount of data consumed in a session is critical network intelligence that you can use to provide a better user experience. Concurrently, that data, as it increasingly gets aggregated, provides um, the opportunity to market either back to Apple in terms of showing them uh, new data uh, on what their users are like, as well as potentially other third parties out there in the ecosystem who might take advantage of this new mobile data behavior pattern and demographic to enhance their own marketing. Now clearly you're talking about gathering information from, from users, telecom users. What are some of the privacy implications of this? Are there any privacy implications and, and how do you overcome them? How do you allay people's fears that the data that's being collected is not going to be misused by the operator? I think we're going to have to take a lesson from the online community because there are genuine privacy concerns. And certainly when it comes to voice calls, one should not be um, doing any kind of data mining on voice calls. But, but let's go back to 2002 in the early days of the online internet. Um, more advertising was about a six billion dollar market. Ten years later, in 2012, it's expected to exceed 147 billion dollars in revenue. Um, 
if you look at how that was done, it was done very carefully through industry-led consortiums around privacy, through opt-in business models, through the careful management and preservation of people's privacy. But nonetheless, there's a tremendous amount of data mining that goes on in the online community. We see that every time we go onto a website to buy something in the recommendation engines and the presence of other sophisticated algorithms to improve our relevance or the context of our experience. So with that as the model, in the mobile world, um, we have the same sort of opportunity. In fact, I would argue uh, if we don't pursue some sort of opportunity to monetize data, um, it'll be very difficult for us to afford the build-outs we have in 4G and beyond uh, in terms of being able to afford those build-outs and give people the data access and plans they want. So if we go back to what we need to do in the mobile world, um, similarly to the online world, we're going to have to um, continue to support industry-led initiatives and consortiums, provide people opt-in models, and be very careful about the usage uh, and the ways in which we handle people's um, consumer data. But again, um, I go back to it. At the end of the day, 10 years later, most of us have permitted, to some level, um, brands, online brands, to, to both collect, mine, and use our own data usage patterns and da data. And therefore, I think there's a similar model that we can put in place for the mobile world. Yeah. But presumably it must be a permission-based model, not just something done quietly on the side. Yeah, it'll have to be permission-based. It'll have to have clear boundaries and guidelines as to what can be used and in what manner and how. Uh, and clearly, it will have to work in collaboration with regulators to ensure that local laws are respected. But this has been done uh, in the past, and I think it's certainly achievable today. And, and as I said, almost an imperative if we're going to come up with the sufficient revenue streams to provide people the kind of network accessibility they want in the mobile world. John, thank you very much. That was very interesting. Mm -hmm.